my pleasure to welcome in one of the most amazing men I have ever had the pleasure of knowing, a man who is the foremost expert on Islam. He's uh, written a series of books called Lifting the Veil, The True Faces of Muhammad. And, uh, and Islam knows the religion better than anyone alive, but more importantly has the courage and compassion and wisdom to speak out against it. IQ, uh, uh, it is um, tragic that um, Canadians uh, decided that they would replace a prime minister that was um, accurate in his depictions of Islam and uh, opposed to Islamic terrorism and uh, bring one in that uh, he's going to change the tone so that uh, Canada can be more accepting of Islam. Well, I would like to start by putting it on the record for future reference. Yes. A few personal predictions, if you don't mind. Please. The Canadians have just, as you said, brought into power Justin Trudeau as mm -hmm. Prime Minister, mm -hmm. who will be their version of Obama in every possible manner. Why do I say that? He's a liberal thinker mm -hmm. who knows, whose knowledge of Islam is as abysmal as his political shrewdness. Yes. Before his election, he literally prayed with the Muslims in a mosque in the Islamic manner. Mm -hmm. As well as he wrote it about peaceful Islam. Mm -hmm. He's the same guy that in the aftermath of the Boston Marathon Jihad bombing, Justin Trudeau issued a bizarre statement. He said, there is no question that this happened because of someone who feels completely excluded, someone who feels completely at war with innocence, at war with society. This is remarkable. Because this is contrary to what the terrorist Sanarev explained after the bombing. That he and his brother committed murder at Marathon and the Marathon because they wanted to defend Islam. And that his brother had vowed to die for Islam. Mm -hmm. So Trudeau cannot associate Islam with terror, just like Obama. No. Having not even bothered to read Muhammad's Quran, he, like Obama, blames all others for the dysfunction condition that at any, in fact, any sane human being, any decent human being, having read and watched the news, would easily come to the opposite conclusion regarding the despicable characteristics of Muslims. He will support the institution of Sharia in Canada, mm -hmm. allowing Muslim women to wear both yep. hijab or the mm -hmm. He is looking forward to settling hundreds of thousands of Muslims who are refugees from Syria, theoretically, but they're not, <laughs> and other Muslim countries. Yep. Justin Trudeau would put Canada yeah. as an adversary to Israel in the United Nations. Yep. Because he's sympathetic, like his father used to be, to the Palestinian cause, irrespective of the fact that the Christians under the Muslims of so-called Palestine are being systematically terrorized into leaving their land of nativity. Gone from 20% of the population to less than 1%. Absolutely. It was, by the way, that high under Israel, when the Israelis controlled the West Bank and London. Correct, correct. So that's 20, what I'm putting yeah, on the 20, Yeah, 20% to less than 1%. Yeah, he is the uh, he's the living em uh, embodiment of what Yahweh has to say about uh, King Shaul, King Saul. Where uh, you, know, you may not be aware of this, but the, when the Israelites said we wanted a king like uh, the Goyim nations, God said, you know, you ought not uh, want that because if you have a ruler, here's all the horrible things this ruler is going to do to you. That if you choose for yourself a government, but, you know, I'm giving you free will. That's your choice. If you want a, a, a government like uh, other nations, you can have it, but here's what's going to happen to you. You know, when he talks about the wars that they would fight, the, the taxes that they would uh, steal, the uh, all manner of deception that they would perpetrate, and how they would literally um, control the lives of their, uh, of their subjects. Uh, turning them into de facto slaves. Uh, yeah. And Trudeau is the living embodiment of the lie. And by the way, he, by the way, he's a border with the USA will become a very easy point of entry for Muslim terrorists. Of course. Besides the homegrown ones. Yeah, of course. He has already ordered his air force mm -hmm. to return home and not continue attacking ISIS in Syria. Yeah, but, by the way. Ladies and gentlemen, the writing yeah. is on the wall. 
Yeah. That For those who are willing to read it, the USA will need to protect its northern border as well mm -hmm. as her southern border. One of the things that he did is, uh, is saying we ought not be bombing the Islamic State. That's stupid. Uh, but there, everything else uh, that he is uh, advocating is uh, is borderline insane. Uh, the only thing you can say uh, on behalf of Canadians is only 38 to 39 percent of you uh, voted for him, uh, and the uh, uh, which means that the majority, uh, some uh, 61 percent of uh, to 62 percent of Canadians voted for either someone else or, and most probably chose not to participate in the election. And, you know, his only claim to fame was pretty-faced and a well-known name because of his daddy. That's it. Nothing else. He's clueless. clueless. He's clueless, yeah. But yeah. clueless is extremely dangerous, as we found out with uh, the Obaminator here in the United States. Yes, clu cluelessness in, in any leader. He's a leader. An individual who's clueless, okay, he's an individual, but he's a leader. Yes, yeah, clueless. You know, uh, George W. Bush was clueless, uh, but yet because he was uh, ran for office and the majority of Americans who voted voted for him, he uh, uh, used deception to get America into two counterproductive wars, Afghanistan and Iraq, and set the world on uh, on a course for World War III. Clueless is not an alibi when you choose positions of leadership. Correct. Yeah, it was said in the book of Hosha, my people are destroyed for being clueless. I'm uh, paraphrasing, but he said, for lack of knowledge. Because they do not know, they're destroyed. And he's not just speaking about the leaders being uh, ignorant and irrational. It's the people who choose the leaders. Absolutely. Who acquiesce to the leaders. You're destroyed because you're clueless. Ignorance is not bliss, folks. Every people deserve the government that they have. Every people. Yeah. In the United States, there's a uh, you know a new uh, uh, show in town. It's called the Benghazi uh, hearings in the U.S. Uh, Congress, and it's uh, it's all focused on uh, you know Hillary um, uh, not responding uh, appropriately uh, to the brave people who lost their lives in the Benghazi, uh, the former Americans, and yet no one is talking about the only thing that really matters. And that is that Benghazi is a direct result of American foreign policy where we decided that we would take out Assad, excuse me, uh, uh, Muammar Gaddafi, and that we would take him out by violent means, that we would bomb uh, Libya, and that we, through Qatar, would provide billions of dollars worth of weapons to the jihadists to overthrow Gaddafi, and they used those weapons to kill the Americans that supplied the weapons to them. But besides this, I would have thought the most relevant question would be, why did the State Department try to convince the American people that was not a terrorist attack, that was due to anger about a movie? This, to, as far as I'm concerned, this would have broken her back completely, but they didn't address that one. Yeah, that's the second issue. I think the primary issue is cause and consequence. That's the thing that is the biggest, the biggest problem in America is not a failure to understand Islam. It's a failure to understand cause and consequence, to take responsibility for anything, and we're going to turn to that in our next segment, uh, IQ, when we talk about WikiLeaks, cause and consequence. Uh, and, and I want us to think about both these things, but cause and consequence. America decided that uh, Muammar Gaddafi had to go, was not smart enough to figure out that whoever replaced him would be worse. We bombed him into uh, oblivion, and then we, we armed the Muslim jihadists with billions of dollars of weapons. And those weapons were used to kill our, uh, the staff and the, uh, the embassy. That is, that is what happened. And there isn't a single American who's taken responsibility for that, that we ought not have bombed Libya. We ought not have armed the jihadists because they used those weapons to kill us. Have you ever heard a single politician or anyone in the media acknowledge the obvious? They wouldn't. It would be self-destructive. These are, these are the same weapons that literally led to the extermination of the Christians of the Middle East. That is correct. Led to millions of people being destitute to have to leave the Middle East somewhere else.
these are the same weapons that Boko Haram uses to kidnap and gang rape little girls. These are the same weapons that, uh, that the Islamic State and al-Nusra are using to kidnap little girls and rape them. Yes. The same weapons. Same weapons. Cause and consequence. And America seems incapable of exercising good judgment and admitting their complicity in uh, their own demise. And so I think that's the single most important here. The second is the one you brought up. When it is now known for fact that the, the uh, uh, U.S. personnel said that we're under attack by uh, Ansar Sharia. They knew they were under attack by Ansar Sharia because U.S. Um, uh, embassy facilities, uh, U.S. Uh, State Department facilities throughout the world are, um, are populated by CIA um, officials. And the CIA of the United States in Libya um, befriended uh, Ansar Sharia, and that's our Friends of Sharia Law. And they uh, befriended them because they thought they, that they were the most um, uh, manipulative, uh, uh, able to be um, uh, malleable of all of the jihadist groups that we were arming. And we gave them not only weapons, but we played basketball with them, played cards with them at, uh, at the CIA facility there. And we knew all of them. We had given them weapons. And uh, they realized that it was those jihadists and those weapons that were attacking the, the facility in, in Benghazi. And so they said, it's Ansar Sharia. And so the what is that? Minister, yeah, the prime minister of uh, Libya, mm -hmm. a few days later, he himself said nothing to do with any that movie. Correct. These were terrorists. They were Ansar Sharia. He said it. Yeah, of course. It was, it was, it was Ansar Sharia that was working yeah. with the CIA inside of the State Department, and we, we armed them, and we knew them. And the reason they knew the facility in Benghazi so well is because we invited them over there. And they recognized them when they attacked. And so what did Hillary Clinton do? That rather than, than tell the truth, as it had been reported to her from her own staff, she instead redacts all of the information regarding Ansar Sharia, and she replaces it with references to a copped Christian movie about Muhammad, which had nothing to do with it, and promoted that lie. And her boss goes to the United Nations, and he blames the movie. Long after everybody that's informed, including the president and the secretary of state, knew the truth. They lied. Why would they lie to condemn a Christian and blame a Christian when they knew, in fact, it was a fundamentalist Islamic attack? Because they supported them. Yes. McCain went to see them. He was yes. having dinners with them. Yes. Uh, General Valley was the one, the brain, who was supporting them, financing them, and arming them. Right. So when you have Benghazi hearings in Congress, and they're all over the bleeding heart, where were you that night trying to protect your people and not sending in added help for them? Why, you know, all of the, the stuff that is now irrelevant, the two things that are relevant, they don't want to mention. And it's, it's apparent the reason they don't want to mention it is because political correctness will not allow them to say the second. And the first, the Republicans are as complicit as the Democrats. Absolutely. And and, uh, and arming the jihadists there. Now, the other part of it is, IQ, yes. that uh, if, uh, since what we did in Libya backfired, and it, there, we are wholly responsible for the Libyan nightmare, and it absolutely backfired, that getting rid of a bad secular dictator led to something infinitely worse. Why are we doing the same thing in Syria? Because America has not learned anything in six years with Islam. Once we had uh, taken out Saddam Hussein and uh, opened up a civil war that had led to almost a million dead people in, uh, in Iraq, the annihilation of the Christians in Iraq, the annihilations of the Zoroastrians in Iraq, and a civil war between Sunnis and Shias that has engulfed the, the Middle East, 
after we had failed that miserably in Iraq in trying to nation build and get rid of a secular dictator, why in the hell would we do the same thing in Libya? And then when it because failed the same way in Libya, why would we do the same thing in Syria? Because you said it before. It is total stupidity. It's utter stupidity when you repeat the same mistake, expecting different results. Okay. Now, here's IQ, the place where we have been in absolute agreement. And I was in absolute agreement with that statement until earlier this week. And earlier this week, I read the WikiLeaks documentation of the United States' direct complicity in the Syrian civil war. It wasn't stupidity. We did it deliberately. We did it deliberately. Back in, uh, in 2006, the United States articulated a plan, and it's published now by WikiLeaks, the internal documentation uh, avowed by the, uh, every security agency in the United States, the CIA, the NSA, the FBI, military intelligence, the Department of Defense, and the White House. Everybody's involved, including the State Department. And the strategy was to create a civil war between Sunnis and Shias and to use that civil war between Sunnis and Shias to bring down Assad. But it is still stupidity. Why? It's, is it stupid David, to do David, that? David, yeah. David, yeah. It doesn't matter if it's stupid. Yeah. It's but, stupid. But it was, yes. But in the past, what I have said is our, our stupid invasion of Iraq, the consequence of our foolish uh, taking down of Saddam Hussein, and trying to nation build in Iraq and arming both sides in Iraq is what led to this, the Syrian civil war, as if our stupidity in one place, the consequence was the Syrian civil war in another place. But that's not completely true. What's completely true is that long before the Arab Spring, five years before there was a, uh, a an Arab Spring, the United States was already had the CIA in Syria to arm Sunni jihadists to take out Assad. And that the reason that the peaceful demonstrations turned immediately to, uh, to civil war is because the United States had already designated the jihadists and had set them up and had armed them and was funding them right from the beginning. We did it deliberately. I did, I'm not disagreeing with you. Don't misunderstand me. It was deliberate, mm -hmm. but still it was stupid. Oh, because they still haven't learned anything from previous operations that they did. Correct. Yeah, the, the, CIA, not, the CIA, the Central Intelligence Community, has no intelligence. No intelligence, exactly. Thank you very much. That's it. Yeah, yeah. It's, That's it. It's, uh, it's very much like uh, the CIA was behind the, the whole idea to use the Taliban and, uh, and al-Qaeda uh, as proxies to go fight the uh, the Soviets. That's what they. That was their big deal. They just loved to take it to the Soviets, and so they used the Taliban and Al Qaeda to take it to the Soviets. And their great scheme was that uh, by proxy we could arm the Al Qaeda and the Taliban, and they would take down the uh, the Russian-backed government of Afghanistan. We were too stupid to understand. Well, then what? Well, then well then who's going to be over Afghanistan and isn't a fundamentalist Islamic group like the Taliban going to be worse for Afghanistan and worse for America than was the uh, the Soviet government? And what's but the consequence? Yeah, but you need logic to have consequence. And then you when don't have the logic, when you have a the chief, commander in chief of the United States refusing to associate terror with Islam, mm -hmm. how are you going to win the war? It is impossible. When you, when you try to prevail against Islam, playing Islam's game, which is war, which is really terror because we're bombing uh, civilian communities and because the, the Islamic State is an amalgamation of civilian Islamists. And so when you engage in a war using the tactics of Islam and you stoop to the same level as Muslims, all you do is uh, is validate them. You can't win a war against Islam with bullets and bombs. You make it worse. 
So even if we associated Islam with terrorism, and Muslims perpetrate 99.9% .9 of the terrorist acts in the world today, even if you correctly associated them with them being the only common denominator, your response cannot be war. Your response has to be words. It's got to be quarantine. Yes, it does. Only quarantine. Yeah. That is, you don't uh, allow that is any Muslim to live in any country outside that in Islam. There is a disease in the world that's far more deadly and more contagious than Ebola. It's Islam. Yeah, it's Islam. It's Islam. And if uh, you were uh, um, head of a country and uh, there were uh, 10 million people that were affected with Ebola, and you said, you know, the humane thing to do is that these people are marching towards our borders, is that we ought to take them in, we ought to uh, to feed them, we ought to house them, we ought to fund them, and we ought to try to integrate Ebola right into our mix. You would say, well, that's insane. And yet Islam is vastly more destructive and vastly deadlier than is Ebola. And yet the Europeans are welcoming them by the hundreds of thousands. Yeah. Yeah, my wife was talking to a, uh, a German citizen the other day. She says, you know, how in the world are you taking in, you know, a million Muslims a year into uh, Germany, particularly when the ones that are already there don't work? And uh, when the, they're, they're, as a whole, want to impose Islam on Germany. And they say, oh, well, you know, it's going to be okay because we really need workers, and, and they're going to work. You know, there's never been a coalition between Islam and work, ever. 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 Muhammad, Muhammad never worked, never worked a day in his life. He never worked. Yeah, never. Muhammad never worked a day in his life. The first Muslims never worked. Uh, you know, there, there are statements in the Hadith that, that show the, the first Muslims looking at people that actually worked and just being amazed as to what work was about. And the people that had wealth because they worked for their wealth, the Muslims routinely robbed. They terrorized them. You know, the, the last kabar, uh, that uh, Jewish uh, enclave, the, the kabar Jews were coming out of their town with implements of work, with their shovels and their spades to till the land. And so what did Muslims do? Did they take the... the the spade and the shovels and the and the hoes and say, hey, let us join with you to work and we'll produce some food and we'll do something beneficial together. They slaughtered them. Right. And the one thing they did not take, they did not take the, the, the tools of commerce. They did not take the land. They just stole the property. Thank you for the first time in a long time. I'm actually frustrated. And I'm frustrated uh, for two reasons. The first is that the only solution to Islam is quarantine. If you don't isolate this, the most terroristic, deadly, and destructive pathogen ever conceived by humankind, it will destroy everything. Islam has consistently destroyed everything it touches. And, and yet, even though that's the only appropriate response, which means you don't supply them with arms, which would cut, you know, America's arms sales by about 90%. And you don't um, um, invade their countries, which would give no purpose for the U.S. military. And you uh, don't buy their oil, and you don't allow them into your country. And yet, what are we seeing right now? Tens of millions of Muslims infecting every country on Earth. And everybody is welcoming them with open arms. Yeah. So the app, the opposite of what's saying is what is happening. Correct. So how do you, where do you get the enthusiasm to expose and condemn this kind of stupidity, to tell people what you're doing is catastrophic, it's suicide, when they're um, swallowing the poison faster than you can even get the words out? Why do you think I'm upset also? Yeah. We've been doing this for what, 10, 12, 14 years. Yeah, every bit of that. And each prediction you made is correct, and each prediction I made is correct. Yeah, we haven't each missed on any. Yeah, we haven't missed on any. And we've been no, doing all correct. Correct. 
We've told the world exactly what was going to happen and how it was going to happen, when it was going to happen, and why it was going to happen, and it's all taken place exactly as we said it, it would. You know, I even have uh, three-hour shows on uh, programs like uh, Coast to Coast where I laid out exactly the consequence of our behavior, what it was going to lead to. Everything I said was true. You know, IQ, the, uh, the other part of my frustration is what just happened in Sweden, because I think it's going to happen more and more. There are going to be idiots that, uh, that respond to Islam with swords and with, uh, with guns and that are going to lash out in unintelligent, immoral ways. But these, are, but these are not idiot people. These are people who are frustrated like you and I and who are expressing their frustration with, ma with mass murder. Yeah, well, the one who committed mass murder in Norway mm -hmm. two years ago or so. Yeah. Oh, I, what did he do? Whom did he kill? He killed the children of the elite of Norway, the very elite who were allowing Norway to be destroyed. Mm -hmm. Still That's the wrong what he was doing. I'm not thing condoning what he's done, but I fully understand his anger and frustration. But here's the problem. You and I, as, as two of the most um, formidable voices, exposing and condemning Islam are going to be expressly blamed for the rage of those who commit acts of mass murder. And even though you and I say all the time, do not use violence, never resort to violence. When you resort to violence, you made a back situation worse all the time. When the United States responds to the Islamic State through the use of violence, we make it worse, not better. And what these people have done when they resort to violence because they're frustrated is they play right into the hands of the most violent doctrine that ever lived because now they can say, no, it's not our fault. It's the fault of, of those extremists. And so what they have done is they have done enormous damage to the cause of truth, of intelligence because of the way they've responded, and they will, the media and politicians will do everything in their power to take us down with them, even though we have never advocated violence. But I'll tell you something. Yes. If between now and the first three months of next year, mm -hmm. the Europeans don't resort to mass violence, Europe will be finished. Yes, and, and, they're, going to. and they're going to. And they're going to. I mean, what you're going to see is you're going to see more and more people frustrated because they can't stop their leaders from doing something that they know is wrong. They don't know why it's wrong. They, I've not heard any one of these these mass murderers, uh, nor have I heard anybody that's a part of the anti-Islam groups uh, in Germany and Europe articulate why Islam is responsible for 99% of the world's terrorists. Uh, they are lashing out based upon all manners of, of hatred, but not of knowledge. Correct. And as such, the source of their anger is going to be directed at you and me. And even though all we have said is that you need to know the truth. You need to know the truth about Islam, that Islam was conceived as a terrorist dogma. It has always been a terrorist dogma. It will always be a terrorist dogma. That's what Islam is at its very heart. It is a doctrine of death that gives no one a reason to live, only a reason to die. And you know something, IQ? When our response to those that uh, attack us for conveying this mace message, and they attack us as being hate mongers and inspiring hate, when they do so and we say there isn't a single thing that we have said that isn't valid, that 100% of our evidence comes from the Quran and Hadith, and that there is no one that has ever refuted anything that we have published about Islam. It won't matter. The truth will not be a defense. True. But I honestly believe that the truth will will. The truth always wills. Because the truth is divine. I am not as just, you know, I'm not as uh, I'm more optimistic than you are, I think. Because I honestly believe, as much as I hate that's going to happen, Mm -hmm. There will be mass revolution in Europe, and if it doesn't happen in the next three, in the first three months of next year, 
or by the first of three months of next year, Europe will be finished. Yeah, and I don't think there will be a uh, uh, a revolution, and uh, okay. and I don't think there'll be a revolution in the United States. Uh, I uh, I think that there will be protests, but. You've already seen the anti-Islamic protests uh, throughout Europe, particularly in Germany, die way down, and they died way down when, when the uh, the leaders of those pro protests were uh, were humiliated, and they have died way down. I don't see uh, that happening because I think that most people are simply willing to go along. I think that the vast majority of people that nothing matters, truth, reason, evidence. Even when they see it play out before their very eyes, they just don't care enough. Human nature doesn't change. I don't honestly no. believe. Yeah. It hasn't changed in 10,000 years. It will not change in another 10,000 years. Right. The human nature is clannish. It is tribal. Yeah. What is happening in Sweden, what happened in Sweden yesterday, mm -hmm. what happened in Norway, it is going to be repeated. And there will be a revolution, at least I hope there will be a revolution, that will overthrow the government. I know it sounds ridiculous, but it isn't that ridiculous. The human nature, if Egyptians, a third-rate nation, in the sense of economics and uh, education, if Egyptians were able to remove one of the most uh, oppressive governments in their history, in, after one year, I have hopes. Yeah, but what did they get? They got an even more oppressive government. Well, it isn't as bad. Yes, it's bad. is not as bad mm. as Al Morsi. Al Morsi would have created even greater disaster in the Middle East. You know, what's interesting is that the top Christians in Egypt are suffering more under Sisi than they did under the Muslim Brotherhood. This is kind of like what happens in America, IQ, when uh, Americans uh, put a Republican in the White House, they're less um, uh, at on guard against uh, overzealous government spending. And yet government spending grows faster under Republican administrations than it does Democratic, because they're more on their guard when a Democrat's in the White House. And so when they got a quote-unquote military dictator, uh, the the fact of the matter is that uh, Sisi is, is every bit as fundamentalist a Muslim as was the uh, the leader of the Muslim Brotherhood, and he is even more dictatorial. So, I, yeah, you know, the Muslim Brotherhood is as evil as evil gets. But this uh, this military junta that absolutely allows no dissent, uh, no free they speech. They can't afford it. To, to be fair, they can't afford it. Saddam Hussein never allowed any dissent. Gaddafi never allowed any dissent. No Muslim leader allows any dissent. Yeah. They can't afford it. Why? Because Islam, you give them an, an inch, yeah. and they will take your arm away. Mm -hmm. And these people know how to control these other people. Gaddafi was able to rule for almost 50 years. For almost 50 years, I'm challenged. Yeah. Yeah, he would have ruled until the day he died, and his children would have taken over and said, Mr. Saddam Hussein, in my country, mm -hmm. his children would have taken over. Yes. But the West interfered. America interfered. France, England, all of them interfered. Mm -hmm. Big mistake. Big mistake. Oh, big mistake. Uh, Mubarak was infinitely superior to either CC or the Muslim Brotherhood. Uh, and we saw to it that Mubarak was replaced. Um, the Shah of Iran was infinitely superior to that which replaced him with the Ayatollahs, but we saw to it that the Shah was replaced. Muammar Gaddafi, same thing. Assad, same thing in Syria. We, uh, The Russian government, the Russian-backed government of Afghanistan was infinitely superior to the um, uh, government of the Taliban that replaced them. No question about it. This is why Putin has interfered in Syria. He has enough of interference from the United States and the United and Europeans, bungling mm -hmm. up everything, making it worse. A year and a, one year and three months they have been bombarding ISIS, and ISIS is bigger than ever before. In fact, IQ, can you imagine anything as devastating to the credibility of a country than a 
uh, documents that lay out step by step how the government wants to kill a, a head of state in another country by establishing a civil war between the religious uh, foes, between Sunni and Shia Islam. And that to see that manifest five years after it was written, and then to know that that has led to the worst catastrophe in modern world history. And that is laid bare for everyone to see. And there isn't a single major news agency in America that picked up the story. There isn't a single American that's, uh, that's screaming out against it, not anyone in Congress having a hearing on it. So how are you going to have a revolution when no one responds to the most important news ever? The, the, the revolution occurs not because of the news media. It's because of the rape that will happen in Europe, because of the damage the, the Muslims will do, because of the, in, the inconvenience to Germans, to Slovaks, Enormous inconvenience happening now as we speak in Croatia, in Slo Slovakia, in Greece, Thanks. in Germany. They are moving Germans from their homes to allow Muslims to take over. Now tell me, how is that possible? But it is. It's happening. Yeah. I think we have. Uh, we have Jason on the line from uh, Canada, who um, my guess is did not vote for uh, Trudeau. Hello, Jason. Hi. Yeah, you'd be right about that. Yeah. 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 Actually, uh, yeah, I was a, uh, um, somewhat uh, relieved while uh, while Harper was governing things and uh, his position on uh, Israel and uh, uh, his, you know, uh, not so accommodating stance on uh, on Islam. On yeah. Islam. Yeah. He made yeah, some stupid there. statements on uh, on Islam, to be sure, but. Well, I still put him. I still put him in the top five leaders worldwide. Yeah, yeah, and he was in for uh, eight or ten years. And, yes. Uh, you know, um, I would say I'm optimistic too, uh, because uh, you know, like it's a, it's another affirmation in a way. I mean, these things can't stand long term, and uh, you know, it's going to get ugly. Yeah, but I guess in some weird way. I'm, I'm kind of glad it's not going to last forever. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, think and I, would, I would agree with IQ, too, that, uh, you know, like, the governments of the world today, they're going to lose control of the people that they're taking advantage of. Yeah. And, and there's, it yeah. gets too deep. Yeah, that's the place where I think, IQ, you are right. Um, and I talked about it a bit in the first hour. Rather than really a revolution against the government where the people uh, take over, there's going to be anarchy. What you're yeah. going to see is that a very significant percentage of Germans, of, uh, of Europeans at large, are going to say, I don't want any more of this, and uh, I'm going to stand up against it since my country is continuing to bring in this poison. We're going to stop it, and unfortunately, they're going to do so violently, and it's going to bring out a period of anarchy. I would say so, yeah. I would, uh, at least, you know, if it comes down to it, uh, I won't be just uh, rolling over. No. But let me tell you something, guys, about the anarchy. The United States has created the um, largest empire in the history of the world, and we've created that empire through having 1,400 military bases in, uh, in uh, 120 countries. And we've created it by being the, the merchants of death, because when we sell our military hardware, that military hardware does no one any good unless we maintain it and train people how to use it, and we don't do that unless you use it the way we want it to be used. So look at the Ukraine, where there was a popular uprising against the Kiev uh, regime. What did America do? It provided the money and the means for the Kiev regime to deploy its military hardware against those that were rebelling against the regime. What do you think is going to happen in the rest of Europe when this occurs, IQ? Don't you expect the same thing? I, as I said, there will be anarchy. Yeah. Maybe I use the wrong word, revolution. Yeah. But when you have anarchy, the only people who are organized will be the military. Correct. Yeah, what I see happening in, uh, in Europe, IQ, is if, if what you're saying is there's going to be riots, there's going to be anarchy, as people rebel against us, and they do so violently as opposed to using words, 
that the anarchy will be repressed through military intervention, that uh, Europe is going to become a police state to suppress the anarchy. Well, or maybe the military will take over mm -hmm. from the uh, politicians, like, just like they did in uh, Egypt. Yes. Yeah. Because I, when you have uh, I mean, the I'm only the organized group are the military and the police, there's nobody right. left. Yeah, and you look at America, the military and the police are, are uh, dominant, um, and uh, they will be unopposed. And so if you have the same thing in America, what you're going to witness is, is the conditions that we saw in, um, in uh, the, like Ferguson, uh, the conditions that we saw in Boston after the bombing where, where the only people moving, and there'll be hundreds of, and thousands of them are, our military vehicles and the police and all manner of federal agents armed to the teeth, and it'll be a lockdown of society. Yes, but there is also a difference here. Mm -hmm. Americans own 250 million weapons. Yep, that's the reason that there's this war on uh, guns now. That's why the uh, politicians yes, they, and they the courts are they can take whatever they want. Right. I had an interview a few days ago, mm -hmm. and uh, everybody is talking about uh, the law, the law, no, no, there is no such thing as law. That's right. The Second Amendment is the law. Right. Anybody who wants to override it is going to be with the consent of the people. Right. The people don't want it. You don't give your arm to anybody. You don't register your arm with anybody. Anybody wants right. to take your arm away from you, you should do that. Yes, but the federal courts, I. Uh acting out against the Constitution, have approved the laws that have been uh, implemented against uh, guns. And so the judiciary of the United States is now in direct opposition to the very Constitution that empowers them. And so what's okay, going to happen is, is, is anarchy. That's where we're headed. We are headed to world anarchy, and it's going to happen sooner rather than later. Do you think there's any possible, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm highly doubted that a, a lot of these politicians, especially like Merkel, uh, that they're just acting out of a, uh, a misguided um, humanitarian uh, belief system. Of, uh, yeah. Social or like, yeah. what, what is the? Do you think there's? Uh, they were incentivized, so to speak, by. I don't know. Like they're saying that like Saudi Arabia didn't take in any of them. Yeah, isn't that amazing? Uh, they want to, what's the best way to advance Islam throughout the world? We'll call them victims. Right. And, and give the leaders who can bring them in, right. you know, whatever, lots of cash, I don't know. I mean, right. is that a possibility? What do you guys think about that? Can you, can you imagine us uh, in the West with all the universities, with all of the education being played for fools by Saudi Arabia? But, yeah. But, but it's, that's exactly what's happening. When Saudi Arabia says, yeah, there's 10 million of them, we're not taking in any of them. And even though it's it's, uh, it's a short walk to Saudi Arabia, and they have plenty of land and plenty of money, and yet we're not taking in any of them, we're going to go send them to Europe, and Saudi Arabia's contribution is building mosques for them. And we have in writing uh, that Saudi Arabia uh, have, um, uh, they got interest in advancing Islam. So why not? Why not why make not? it a big immigration movement that's mm -hmm. going to spread Islam faster than anything else? Correct. Jason, let me tell you this. Yeah. Saudi Arabia is insignificant compared to Turkey. Mm -hmm. All that is okay. happening today is Turkey. It is. Turkey is channeling, channeling these people. Yeah. These Maybe. millions right. are coming through Turkey. That's Why? Great. Because the Turks under Erdogan want to reestablish the Ottoman Empire. Yeah. Yeah. And the Saudi Turks Arabia have... is financing it. Right. But Turkey is actually implementing it. Yeah, so, so we're being played for fools by uh, Turkey, which uh, the, the European Union wouldn't allow Turkey to be part of the euro uh, because of, of uh, the impoverishment of Islam. And yet what the Turks are doing is allowing tens of millions of Muslims to invade Europe to make the rest of Europe just like Turkey. Exactly. But that's exactly what's happening. Now, Saudi Arabia is financing Turkey is doing the implementation. Mm -hmm. Most of those people are coming from Turkey. Yeah. It is absolutely well, true. And they're, they're not fleeing the Islamic State and Hezbollah. They're taking their Islam right along with them. Good, yeah. good. Look at the pictures. Oh, I know. Each and every and one of them is, every female is wahajab. Yes. Wearing a hijab. 
Yes, every exactly. female. Right. Every male is with a beard. Right. All of them of military age. Yes. Between the age of 18 to 40. Yep. Military age. They've imported the most yeah. deadly pathogen man has ever conceived right into their home. So, like that one point I was going to make was the, the silver lining in it is that people will be forced to uh, give up having uh, a confidence in, uh, in the governments that rule over them. Yes. But you know, so there's going to be an, get, right, there's going to be anarchy, um, and that is for sure. I, I, Q, you made a point. You said the truth always prevails because the truth is divine. There is only one source of absolute reliable truth, and it is divine. It's found in the Torah, Prophets, and Psalms. There is hope. The truth will ultimately prevail. But mankind is going to go through the most hellish years. Over the next, between now and 2033, this planet is going to be devastated by, uh, by man's stupidity. And isn't that purpose uh, actually, um, it, this, this hell is actually, mm -hmm. has a purpose to it too. Isn't it going yeah. to basically um, bring out uh, the, the ruin of Israel, the yeah. sons of Israel. Yeah, it brings out a choice. It, it, uh, it puts your IQ in the situation. Who are you going to trust? Are you going to trust God and his uh, poor guidance, or are you going to trust a human institution that is working against your interests? Who are you going to trust? Whose side are you going to be on? Who do you think will deliver yeah. it first? And uh, the answer is Yahweh. So you're right. Truth will prevail, and truth is divine. Truth is the Torah.